Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live this morning, everyone. We've gotten past the big tech and the airlines and some of the bank portion of earnings season. Almost 90% of S&P 500s have reported numbers so far as well. The overall vibe, kind of better than expected. Five of the 11 sectors are reporting year-over-year earnings growth, led by the consumer discretionary and industrial sectors. For a deeper dive into the season, let's bring in J.J. Kinahan, who is the IG North America CEO. J.J., great to have you here with us this morning. So as we've kind of moved through this portion of earnings season, or at least this outset of it for 90% of the S&P 500 companies, now going forward, what are the expectations for the rest of the year that we've heard from CEOs, from leadership at these companies, especially given the fact that they were largely beating on some of the lowered expectations anyway? Well, I think the the lowered expectations being the key, want to be a little bit careful here in the fact that, you know, it was a little bit like, uh, if you remember Meet the Parents where Gaylord Falker got the ninth place ribbon, I think there are a few ribbons being given out for not spectacular performances. That being said, the Apple performance was awesome. And let's face it, it's been a few stocks that have really driven things overall. So I think that really helped confidence in the market uh, overall. The Tyson earnings this morning, I think, were a little bit uh, surprisingly bad, if you will, their future outlook. And so as I I think as we continue, we just want to hear outlooks. The most interesting part of the earnings season, in my opinion, actually is yet to come. Why do I say that? Because we haven't heard from any of the retailers yet. And so as we know, and as you guys report, you know, every single day, the retail picture has really been quite a a, a dichotomy in haves and have nots. And so I'm very interested to see what's going to happen with the retailers overall, if we will continue to see this, because some of the the stocks that we've seen struggle over the past couple of earnings, like a Nordstrom's is gonna be very, very interesting overall. Uh, We wanna see stocks like Macy's, like Target, uh, obviously Walmart being a leader there. So again, I think the the, uh, earnings season and retailers is going to provide the most opportunity for my, in my opinion, for the individual investor in terms of where to see what comes next and the most important part about those are going to be those ceo comments as you just referenced yeah i want to circle back um to apple for just a sec jj because we heard a lot about apple this weekend as well from warren buffett um at the same time he kind of forget about this this earnings season right he takes a longer view he was talking about this year and that this year is going to be tough for earnings growth um how are you sort of thinking about that maybe as it applies to Apple or is Apple really, you know, as you just mentioned, is it going to be the outlier, not just in this season, but also for the year? Are we just going to have a kind of a lousy year for earnings with bright spots like that? I I think Julia, it is the latter. It's going to be uh, Apple and some other stocks who have some nice earnings, but overall I believe it's going to be a more difficult year for most companies. Again, you know, I don't really see a reason though, as we look taking Apple and applying it to the overall market, I still don't see right now what that catalyst is that gets us above 4,200 on the S&P 500. I guess the good news is I'm trying having a tough time seeing the catalyst that gets us below 3,800 on the S&P 500. We're all sort of waiting for this great breakout one way or the other that just doesn't seem to be coming. Uh, if, if we look at, you know, and the dichotomy of that comes this month, you have to sell in May and go away, if you will, yet we have the S&P 500 at the high end of its range. Can't quite get through 4,200. And if I look at VIX, VIX being so low right now compared to where it's been over the last year or so, being in that 17 handle, again, you know, we're, we're in this very strange environment for most investors trying to figure out which way do I go next? And I think the, 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 the tough part for most people is I think it's really come down to, you know, nibbling a little at the low end of this range, selling a little bit at the high end of this range, waiting for some sort of major indication one way or the other. This really is, to me, more of a patience market than anything else that's happening. And being patient is not exactly what the market's <laughs> known for being really good at. Given that expectations this earnings season were, quite frankly, so sandbagged for many companies, just as they were citing the macroeconomic challenges in the environment that they were wading through and managing through, who is the biggest loser, perhaps, from your perspective, 
given that management teams really, yes, they had to acknowledge and, and be transparent about what they're weathering, but still might not have been able to beat on even lowered expectations? Well, I think it, it, it comes down to, again, something you're reporting on most every day, and that is for a larger situation, perhaps these mid-level banks. And it's not necessarily just because of earnings, but it's uh, I think there's been a little bit, yes, you know, many of them having a nice day today. But this is the, this is the type of story, you know, there's never just one mouse in the house, as they say. And so this is a story that tends to live, uh, is going to live on, I think, for a few more months in terms of can we sort of right those ships so that the mid-level banks can continue to, uh, you know, be, be a factor in the economy in two or three years. Obviously, it's been great for the bigger banks, but the mid-level banks overall have had a difficult time. I think this is also going to apply, quite honestly, to many of the retailers. Uh, when we go forward, I think many of them are going to have to say, hey, this isn't such a great time to be us. And I think that have and have not is going to continue to be a larger and larger story in the retail space overall. And again, you know, particularly those retailers who may have a brick and mortar presence where they're just not getting the kind of traffic they were getting before and they're eating these large expenses. You see in some of the larger cities, businesses that are pulling out, et cetera, well, that has a major effect on many of the, you know, I, I, I'm in downtown Chicago right now. You just see the traffic that used to be compared to the traffic that is, yet these retailers are still, many of them, uh, saddled with this large expense in terms of the brick and mortar, I think that's going to be one of the themes that you start to uh, see this next er this earnings period and going forward is exactly what they're going to do with these large spaces. JJ Kinahan, IG North America CEO. JJ, always appreciate the time and insights. Thanks so Thanks much. Thanks for having me, guys. You got it. Have a great day. You too.